Life with Liz, bringing you lively, witty, and insightful discussion on family life stages, choices, and challenges, as well as current issues and events. All of Liz's discussion is rooted in her life experience as a businesswoman, wife, and mother, having lived and raised her family internationally. Life with Liz, and now your host, Liz Gavert. All right, all right. Good afternoon, evening, morning, whatever it is for you all. My name is Liz Gabert, and welcome to Life with Liz and Beyond. And uh, I am back after a year-long uh, pandemic uh, break, and um, I am now Life with Liz and Beyond. And I am beyond because, as you, if you'll remember, I used to be Life with Liz. I do radio, which is Life with Liz. But I'm back as Life with Liz and Beyond, and this will be a little bit different because I'm going to be a little bit kinder and gentler Liz, if that makes any sense. I'm going to be talking to a lot of interesting people with a lot of interesting stories. Um, some you might cry, some you might laugh, and some you might just be inspired about. And so today, my first show back here, I have on set. In studio with me, <laughs> Kathy Burnham Martin. That's true. And holy smokes, folks. Now, I had never met this beautiful, gorgeous lady <laughs> before today, but I am inspired. And um, I think a lot of folks here in New Hampshire know you, Kathy, right? I've been around uh, New a Hampshire for a few decades. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. So would you like me to do a little bit of an official Intro, how about if I do that? If you'd like. I will do that. Your, your call. Okay. Your show. My show, I can do what I want to, right, Kathy? It's, it's beyond me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's beyond me. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> Lord. What have we done? Okay. Um, so, Kathy. Oh, no. I, okay, Kathy, I don't have my glasses, so we're going to try something else. You have been born in, you have been born, you were born in Golfstown, weren't you? That is true. Holy smokes. At a hospital that's now a car dealership. <laughs> You're a native daughter of New Hampshire, <laughs> yes. <laughs> having been born in a car dealership. But yeah, um, right. you, my dear, are and you have this career path that's amazing, and um, we're going to talk about that a little bit because I need to learn more about it. But you have been uh, through recruiting, communications, television, broadcasting, management, and bank organize organizing. You know, um, you are a writer of countless books. <laughs> oh my heavens! But um, also, let me let me throw a couple of these little known facts about you out. Are you okay with that? I'm fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> there, um, won't, there won't be little she, known anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathy sang with the Beach Boys mm -hmm. at one time. Ba 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 ba. Oh no! Honest, yes. Oh whoa! Sing a few. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she also shared a dressing room with Ella Fitzgerald. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Yeah. She emceed with Tony Bennett. Oh Lord have mercy. She <laughs> has shared a stage with Adam Sandler, who's uh, I, I guess from here as well. And let's see what else. Oh, you are dubbed the morale booster for your 20-year uh, your professional membership with the National Speakers Association. Yeah, you've also talked to, last one, I promise. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, the popcorn guy, Orville, Orville Redenbacher. Redenbacher. Oh, sure. You've talked to a lot of folks, a lot of presidents, too, haven't you? Yes. Okay. Sometimes That's they're, not, the best the most, I can they're do. not the most interesting people, necessarily. They're though. not? No. Politicians, you don't typically get to know who they are. Mm. Okay. Whereas you talk to somebody like Orville Redenbacher, yeah. and um, he pops up with all kinds of information. I bet no, so. But, Politicians hold back. They have a persona yeah. they're trying but to present. But can't you bring so them? You brought fun. them out, didn't you? Yeah, only As if a, they want with you your to. amazing talent. Only if they want you to. Okay. Although, if you're listening to their answers, so many times you hear somebody who doesn't answer a reporter's question. Yes. But they'll just move on because they've got so many questions they have to get through. Mm -hmm. And you want to say, no, no, no. Remember the question? Yes. <laughs> you had a good time. You didn't do but that, huh? Okay, I would do. On that, occasion, but, you okay. could because okay. you had time. But sometimes you don't really have total control. Okay. It's okay. only good when you're not live because then you can keep 
going for it. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Well, you know what? I'll tell you, you are my one of my sheroes. I call them sheroes. <laughs> there you go. I'm serious. But um, is there are there any blanks that you can fill in for me relative to your careers um, <laughs> that I, I would um, like to know about and learn from? I think mostly I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Ah. So that's why it becomes very eclectic. And it's easy to have an eclectic career because what I was trained to do isn't what I ended up deciding I wanted to do. I went okay. to college for speech and theater thinking, oh, of course, I'll be a musical actress. Okay. And then it's called, well, you really probably will need something that pays the rent and is a more stable life and all of that. So I said, okay, fine. So I liked public relations, marketing. I felt I could turn the the skills that you use in public speaking into marketing. It made okay. sense. I was good in math. So, okay, go that route. And then I stayed in theater and by chance doing volunteer work, ended up hosting a telethon for Easter Seals and was hired into a television station out of a telethon. Was that all here in New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it was and? very strange and yes. fun and odd. And I like to think it's good to be open to opportunities that Absolutely. come down the road, though you weren't ready. And I turned them down. It was WMUR TV. I turned them down three times. People think I'm out of my mind because you don't do that. So many people were applying every day for those jobs. And I was like going, oh, poo, poo, poo. I can't work there. What would I tell my friends? Oh, what a little snot I was. What did I know? I knew nothing about television. But it's easy when you're sitting in your living room to be the critic. Of course. It's like, oh, yeah. I, I can't work there. Yeah. I had everything to learn. <laughs> so I had to absolutely put that big you know, overinflated ego aside and learn. <laughs> ah, and I understand you did very well so. Because I had the few people I've talked to, I, you know, I didn't know you, right, before this. Right. Everybody knows you in this state, right? <laughs> my, my mother beyond. likes to think so. I yes. always say I'm a legend in yeah. my mother's mind. Yes. But yes. Um, I have been very blessed that even though I've been off the air for, well, <laughs> a lot of years, since 1994. Okay, wow. I'm blessed that people still remember me and fondly. Yeah. Because typically when you leave television six weeks later, they don't remember your name. So I've been very fortunate. But I think it's because being from New Hampshire, I really enjoyed going out into the community and, and giving coverage to things that had probably been overlooked, whether it was our colleges or some of our festivals and fairs mm -hmm. and the, the real human activities and cultural things that we do. And that was a blast. And that was my background, because I was a theater girl. Mm -hmm. So it was great to be able to walk in and, and handle these things. But then they'd call me in on some emergency story, and it involved a courtroom, and I didn't know proper protocols. But oh, I happened to know the judge. I'd gone to school with his children. So I would <laughs> kind of worm my way in, and, and things would just work out, because I was local. Yeah, quick study, too, it sounds like. Well, it's I mean theater. Oh. You keep singing, you keep dancing. You forgot the tune, <laughs> keep singing. You have, or they're going to throw tomatoes. You know, yes, you, you yes. just learn you've got to keep going. So it worked out for me to do the live things because I wasn't going to get held up with the script. It's called What's the Story? If I know the story, I can tell you the story. And I enjoyed that. And, and so when I shifted and did more in the coaching of public speaking, yes. that became the guideline. I'd have a variety of our politician types from Washington who said, I'd like you to coach me. And I said, I can't do that. Conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Because then when I'm interviewing you, I know the chinks in the armor and I'd have to go for it. So that's not right. But when I was out of broadcasting, then I could coach. And it would be simple things. Sometimes somebody just needs to accept a lovely, wonderful award that they've earned. And they're so nervous that when they get up on that stage in front of people, they'll be over emotional. And I went, that's okay. You gotta just be comfortable with who you are. And that became how I would coach, is teaching people to be comfortable, be okay with who you are. I talk with my hands. Oh, I know you hadn't noticed. <laughs> and it, it's, if I, if I don't sorry. wanna talk with my That's hands, so I have to like sit on them. You just have to know who you are and just let it be, let it be. If I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry. And that will happen. And that is just what it is. How much are you charging me for this session? Zero. Okay. But I will give you the one, the quickie little <laughs> advice I would give people. Yes. When they're going out to do a talk, maybe they're introducing something. I go, you've got a page of notes. What are the three most important things that are going to happen at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end? Give me three words. And they'll have their three words. I'll say, fine. I'll write them on the back of a business card and take the script away. Ah. Because why? 
when you get out there, the lights are going to blind you. You're going to be nervous. You're not going to be able to read it. It'll just make you more nervous. So if you just have that little card with three words, number one, you have a shot at being able to read it. Number two, you probably won't have to look down. It's just three words. You know your story. So you've got your beginning, you've got your middle, you've got your end. I go, make them laugh, make them cry, and get off the stage. Golly. I know it's silly. I used I, to teach public speaking in college, too. I wish I'd <laughs> known this three years ago when I started all this stuff, because I was an accountant oh, in awesome. my previous life. Well, what a fun transition you've oh, yeah. had. Well, thank you. This is not about me. It's about you. Oh, very uh, funny. Right? Yeah. Very uh -huh. nice. Okay. All right. So moving ahead, Miss Kathy, um, let's talk about, um, so 1994, you... Um, wrapped up, yeah. you know, your, your life on stage, it sounds like, right? You did coaching and so forth. Well, I after still that. did some theater. Oh, you did some theater? I'm still card carrying in theater. Oh, oh yes. Are. I, well, I stayed in, oh. in musical theater a long time. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. But you started writing books at some point, and you've got 20 plus books. In the 2000s, I started to okay. write. Okay. In the 2000s. But meanwhile, I did, I, we started a bank yeah. and that sort of a thing because okay. uh, marketing really was my background. Ah. It took me a long time to get background to marketing, but. Okay, <laughs> okay. very good. <laughs> so you go through being yep. a bank organizer and doing the, the selling of stock and all of that sort of a thing. You do, it's, it's all fun and lovely to work with regulators and. Wee. I bet not. No. <laughs> Didn't, didn't really phase me. Uh, okay, okay, I guess so. I'm not sure there's something. But then that. But, transitioning yeah. out of that, yes. uh, I was helping at my husband's telecommunications office. Okay. So I was doing his marketing and working with his salespeople and that sort of a thing, which okay. was great. But uh, going through the change of life, I couldn't sleep. So I wrote my first book. Hey, you're up all night anyway. Sounds weird, but you're up on no, that. What's the difference? Uh, no, it's not So I have my flashlight yeah. and my notebook, mm -hmm. and the first book was born. It was actually written by our Newfoundland dog uh, at the time. I, it started as letters that he okay. would write to his owner, the youngest daughter, away mm -hmm. at school. Mm -hmm. And I realized they were like adventures. So I was turning them into a book. So okay. the first book okay. really wasn't me. I just held the pen because dogs don't have thumbs, and they <laughs> yeah. can't work that out. <laughs> so that's where it started. <laughs> you were funny. Yeah. And so what was the first book? It's called The Miles Mannered Man, Dog Days and the Life of. It's, oh, okay. Um, it's, it's a dog story. Dogs don't die in my books. Uh, they, okay. they are forever friends, and that's as they should be. Later, we had a small dog write one also. It's okay. a, a training manual okay. for humans, how to train your human. But it's a dangerous book for dogs. Don't let it fall in human hands. <gasps> okay. It's only for dogs to read. Mm -hmm. Number one bestseller? Yeah, again, you're talking to my mother, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I started to write, it wasn't, oh, I'm going to sell books. No, right. It really just became the next hobby, the next right. fun thing yes. to do. I wasn't meaning for it to be a career. But I realized as I was moving into retirement, what a fun career to be able to do anywhere. We love to travel, so I can do it on a cruise ship. Sure. I can do it sitting on a beach. I can do it in a cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, we live on a boat every summer. I can ride on a boat yep. Yep. wherever. I am. I can write. So it just made a very easy career to swift, swift into. Yeah, yeah. There I am. And well, you have. It's a blast. I mean, holy smokes. 20 plus, right? Well, now? and now I'm finally so, doing a novel. So yes. I'm just into fiction. But then people will say, wait, those dog books you wrote, that's really fiction. And I go, oh, oh. oh no, no, it's nonfiction. <laughs> they swore every word was true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, I believe them. Yeah. <laughs> your, your latest and greatest. <laughs> Are we going to go there? Sure. Yeah, let's talk about that. So your latest and greatest, I mean, this is like recently new out, yes. is it not? It is just called, got released. Is called Destiny of Dreams. Time is dear. Yes. Oh, it sounds so deep. I, it, and, I'm sort of sad to say it is. Yeah, but, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's yep. sad, kind of serious and deep. And I think um, for lots of folks, I mean, depending on where you are in life, could be very thought-provoking as well. Yeah? Yes. I think especially okay. in this age of what I call the cancel culture, mm -hmm. that if you don't happen to have the same opinion as someone else, yes. they try to diminish you, mm -hmm. belittle you, cancel you. And I go... In my opinion, the only thing that should be canceled is the cancel culture because we need to learn to be more open, more tolerant. And sadly, history will show us too many examples over and over and over again of the horror that happens when a nation, a people, a government, a body does not practice tolerance. Right. And that is a very major theme in this, although 
I did not intend it to be. This is a book that I actually started years ago. Oh, really? And it was just okay. time to finish it. It is the Armenian side of my story, and my mom's twin sister, who I always called my other mother, had passed away, and we realized I, I only had one Galumian girl left in my life because their younger sister had passed earlier. And I knew I had to get it done. I had to get it done. So it, it came back to the table last year to get it done. Last year, okay. So I started okay. writing in earnest and, and had to make it actually a book, not just oh, something for the family. Right, Turn it into right. something a little Ex different. Exactly. So this is um, based on history. I mean, yes, it is. It really Very is. So. Right? Yeah. Um, the characters in the book? Are real. Are real. I changed the names of people who are still okay. living. Okay. All right. Um, and others are, I left exactly the same. Okay. So my husband's comment immediately was, oh, my goodness, some of these names are so hard to pronounce. Oh, and th that's what I want to talk to you about. And he wants yes. to go, why, why, you know, he wants them to be mm -hmm. Smith and Jones. And, yes. whatnot. and I said, I'm sorry, this is authentic. Yes. I'm not trying to write it like an, uh, you know, Dick, Jane, and Sally. I'm, it's not meant for that. Mm -hmm. It's Gloomian. And I do, in the beginning, give some pronunciation I, advice. Yes. Because it's difficult. Where right. they lived was a city that is spelled V-A-N. We would pronounce that Van. We'd say, oh, that was Van, Armenia. Sure, sure. Well, it's more like the number one with the V in front of it, Von. So they're on Lake Von. They okay. lived in the city of Von. Von. But okay. it's, it, 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 it doesn't matter. I, let people, I want people to envision yes. things their own way, so right. I will give some descriptions and some no, let, let them find right. out. Right. But it, it starts in dreams. And um, anyone who knows me knows I'm very much in this book because I was the one who had those dreams when I was a junior high girl. So this is all very, very real. That's a revelation that does not get it exposed in the book at all. Oh. But I, I share that just because this is local. This is New Hampshire. Yeah. This is home. And this is where the book starts, is right here in New Hampshire. And um, this is where it ends, is right here in New Hampshire. And this is actually just the first of a trilogy. But oh, is that right? It, it is Good. very much here. It's here okay. and Armenia, which sounds so strange as a connection. Right. But what I've found a lot of people early on in the readings are saying is it's so important to pay attention to what happens in countries where we really don't know a lot of information. We need that. There's this diaspora, people scattered from nations all over the world. We're watching it in so many countries where we have throngs of refugees that yes. are being forced from their lives, their cultures, their families, and we don't understand why. And we get nervous about things we don't understand. That makes us put up caution signs. And I think books like this help open doors and tear down walls and make people understand, yes, people scatter. Not everybody makes it out. And it's difficult. It's haunting, it's painful, it's dark, and it's, this has some very violent scenes in it. And I do not speak about the violence in any gratuitous kind of way. There's no gore but you can envision it. It's highly disturbing. There are some very disturbing scenes, and I say that to people with all sincerity because you have to know that going in. This isn't a fun read. People think of my reading and writing as being inspirational, fun, yes. upbeat, encouraging, and this may be inspirational, but it's dark and yeah. haunting. Yes, but you leave, it's, um, it is all the reveal, you know, with, a, with sort of a, a inkling of hope, a message, yes. a feel of mm -hmm. hope. Right, with, uh, in the end. Yes. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Doors and windows open. Okay. So every life has different challenges. Some are more violent than others. And it's very sad when you read about cultures and families and beings. Human beings are so mean to other human beings. But we go through some very bad things. And we have to survive that. And it is a blessing when people who can survive that can turn it into help and hope and encouragement for other people. Absolutely. And an inspiration to do better. And uh, so it was truly a labor of love. Hard to write. You dedicated this to? My mom, her yes. twin, and their younger sister. Right. The Galumian girls. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what they yeah. represent in Armenians everywhere. Because Armenians are scattered around the world. Many in Canada, all throughout. I mean, New England has a, a great many. In this area, Watertown, Mass, has, has a great concentration. But there are many in the Midwest. There are many out in California, mm -hmm. huge population in California. Canada, they're all around. Mm -hmm. But it isn't just about Armenians, as many people who read it recognize. I've had people who are Greek say, the Greeks went through a lot of persecution in that same mm -hmm. time. Anyone who was Christian went through it. Anyone who has any relatives 
who have have been through holocausts, have exactly. been through attacks where, well, look what's going on with Afghanistan, look at the Syrian refugees. It's everywhere. We don't learn. We are very slow to evolve, we human beings. We're dreadful. We're dreadful. So it's stories that need to be told so that we don't keep repeating them. Right. And I think they're so, going to need to be told for many more years I, because we are slow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, we um, are doing a great job at kind of wiping out, and you know, that history, yeah, right? Our children aren't learning, um, I think. I, well, I know the history um, as they should yeah, any longer, yeah. right? And that is an absolute shame. And I think, I I think believe. it's natural, though. Think about the history book when you were in school, okay? When, okay. I, when I was in school, all right, the Vietnam War is going on, mm -hmm. you know, so now what do you read about in a history book? How long is dedicated to the Vietnam War? Right. A That's paragraph? True. A column? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's the same with like World War II. Mm -hmm. We all remember where we were when 9-11 happened. Yes. Oh, yes, okay. Well, my mom remembers where she was when she learned that Pearl Harbor was bombed. Okay. I go, well, I wasn't born. So we all have those moments. Yes. Where were you when the space shuttle crashed? Right. Where were you in this sort of thing? That's right. But with each generation, they're born, they don't know. How many people were born in the last 20 years that oh, didn't know anything about 9-11? Absolutely. Millions. Yes. So you have to relearn history. We have to. And it's critical, absolutely yeah. critical. Right, I mean, uh, so this is amazing. This is, you must be so proud of, of this particular book. I'm excited it's that I got it done. It's very different from your it's other easy, yes. yes, it's easy to put things off and put things off yes. and put things off, and I'd done that a lot. So it was good to finally do it. Yeah. What does your family think of this? Well. Um, <laughs> just ask it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this was very exciting because as I started finalizing things, mm -hmm. I, I was sending two or three chapters at a time to my older sister. So she was reading along with me and reading along with me. And then at the end of saying, okay, how do we tell mom? Because it's really her story mm -hmm. very, very, very closely. Yes. And she goes, I think she can handle this. I think she can handle okay. this. Okay. So we send mom a copy, prepared her. Mm -hmm. She loved it. Oh. She has passed out so many advanced copies to so many of her friends. And they all, many weep because many mm -hmm. of her friends have family who've been through a lot. Um, some are Armenian, and they had, of course, relatives that they lost, sure. or Armenians who made it somewhere, or there were Armenian children that were orphaned and don't even necessarily know exactly who right. their parents were or where they were in the Ottoman Empire when the gates of hell opened on them again. They don't know those things. Mm -hmm. This kind of story coming out again helps put some pieces together for people because they realize that's a family just like mine. I can um, relate. We talked about it prior to, yes. right? Being a Jewish. Um, I didn't know all, um, relatives that had been through the Holocaust, right? Tell your story. But it, it's who, it's part of who I am. Yes, it is. Right? So, as I told you, I haven't read the book. I didn't get much time. You jumped <laughs> right in here with me, and I feel blessed and thankful that you did. But I just, I knew, I sensed that it would be something that I, um, could certainly relate to and benefit from. I think, yes. I think a lot of people can benefit, yes. whether they have something in the family heritage that yes. relates or not, right. because they may know somebody. I've had more people read it and mm -hmm. go, I have some Armenian friends, or gee, I know some people who were this, that, or the other thing. Yes. And they just go, oh, I right. know they're going to want to read this. This is so wonderful. Yep. And I, that makes me feel blessed because I've written some fun books. Yes. I've written some that I call life lessons, mm -hmm. uh, encouragement, how to be and find the best. I like to make people upbeat and have a good time. <laughs> but this one's important. Yes. This yeah. is important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, but you've got a lot of good reviews happening. Yes. Right? Um, and I'm going to, I know, you told me not to look down, but... <laughs> I told you, but, you don't have to. I can well, look I, down. Look, look. I can read, uh, yeah. I can read oh, to you from oh, the book. Oh, I'm going to have to look down. What's the name of the book? Destiny of Dreams. Time is Dear. Oh, God. It's beautiful. What inspired uh, the, the name of the book, the title of the book? A lot of thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a whole page of working titles for several years. Okay. And 
the Destiny. It's the Destiny series. Okay. So this is oh. the first in the Destiny ah, series. So there you go. Destiny of Dreams is first, and you'll have to wait. Much more to look yes. forward to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I, the one I was going. So there's this Doctor Green. Is that his name? Oh yes. Oh he's, yes. This he's is just recent. retired. He's yeah, news um, release. Uh, whatever. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. what he's does the he former say? chief medical officer at, at Concord Hospital. Yes. And he feels it's so important that it should be required reading in every high school. Yes because we do forget. Right. And I think of some of the books that I had to read in high school in, in literature class or whatever, and, yes. and I went, yeah, it would be that kind. Young adult reading often is more fluffy. Right. This would not be fluffy, but it certainly could be in a young adult category okay. as long as it comes with the warning of the implied violence, because it yes. is quite stark. And um, as people know, some people have serious trigger issues, and they yes. just need to be aware of that. So you have somebody there to have conversation about it right. to make sure right. it's In today's leveled. day and time in high school, do you think yes. that um, um, there's a chance? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Not during think, my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I mean, we've, I don't know. I'm, I don't know I'm bound going. to be a famous writer. I think. Decades after I'm gone. You think so? I, I think so, too. I think so. Once we start no. hearing and seeing the rest of them, you know, those kids. All right. So what is your, um, uh, what review are you the most proud of so far? I, there have oh. been, uh, are, uh, just, just floated your boat, floated your boat. Made I, you... I truly weep in reading some of these. Okay. And it's, so, it's fun when people say things like, oh, where's the movie? This should be a film. Or, or they're just, just loving the writing style yes. or the characters. But I think it's the ones where they said, this is important. I didn't expect to see important material yes. delivered this way. It's like history, but told in a, a more delightful fashion as a novel, as a fiction. So some people have actually called it a nonfiction, though it's characters and dialogue. It can't right. be, yes. but it, it, they just feel like I'm getting history in a lively, fast-paced way, and I couldn't put it down. Every chapter made me want to keep reading, keep reading, and I said, oh, good. I would have hoped that. Yes. I would have hoped that. Oh, I kind of built in fantastic. a couple little rest spots so you don't have to read 200 and... You know, well, 76 I mean, pages in on. one sitting you if you know, don't want to. But. I know this isn't the real deal here, but um, this does, I mean, I can read this. You know, It's and a fast so, read. Yeah, it is I, a fast I can read. see that, and that's what uh, the reviews are saying as well. Well, oh my goodness, 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 this has been a pleasure. I have Absolutely totally, I am honored to be back pleasure. with you on your first back show. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, Kathy, thank you so much for joining me. I wish you all the best. Thank you. With your amazing new book and many more to come. I, I hope, hope so. you'll come back. Yes. I yes, plan yes. to. All right, folks, thank you for joining me today. This has just been so much fun. And um, until next time, which I don't know when that's going to be, but, you know, surprises happen and miracles happen, too, don't they? And until next time, God bless you all and take care.